Shalom. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for inviting me. My name is Felicitas Söhne. I'm a medical historian from the University of Ulm in Düsseldorf in Germany. I'm delighted to be here today and talk, to, talk about the topic correlation of traumatic experience and health, the impact of dealing with the late effects of NS terror to West German psychiatric care. Well, this is a historian perspective. As most of you are aware, immediate after the liberation of the camps of the NS tyranny, the mental damages of captivity and persecution were hardly noticed. While an effectively functioning network of medical experts for diseases of war victims and returnees established pretty quickly, the late effects of survivors of the concentration camps aroused low interest. The psychiatrist Paul Friedman criticized this on the conference of the American Psychiatric Association in Washington, 1949. Quote, it seems incredible today that when the first plans for the rehabilitation of Europe's surviving Jews were outlined, the psychiatric problem was overlooked entirely. Concurrent, the common doctrine in Germany questioned the exi existence of mental late effects. With a heritable reconstitution, accordingly, the German psychiatrist Kurt Schneider defined, quote, disease itself exists only in the body, and pathological, we called mental deviance, which can be traced to degenerative processes in the body. Results from the first international congresses to injuries of health and late effects of NS trauma were largely ignored in German-speaking countries. Only to the end of the 1950s in Germany, some outsider from specialist work began to receive the foreign studies and to substantiate them with own investigations. <coughs> Individual experts created reports on compensation and described mental late effects its appraisers contradicted the prevailing paradigm of a solely organic etiology of mental disorder. This, this launched a debate and a finally paradigm shift. The claim that far-reaching horror experiences could cause continuing changes in mental suffering was guarded revolutionary. The purpose of my speak is to describe how dealing with the late effects of NS terror influenced the post war psychiatry in West Germany and thus the de development to the psychiatric reform. My talk consists of four parts. First, I began with sources and methods. Second, I will look at the results of my analysis. Then I would like to discuss the findings. And finally, I will lead them to conclusion. Methods and sources. This topic is a partial aspect of a greater overview study concerning to impulses and framework conditions to the reform orientated development of post war psychiatry in West Germany. <clears throat> the main project focused on the oral history method that is a useful tool for gaining insights into the recent history. I conducted interviews with 25 eyewitnesses of the West German post war psychiatry. Their birth dates lie between 1918 and 1941. Among them were physicians, nurses, therapists, and other representatives from the researching and caring psychiatry and psychotherapy. Some contemporary witnesses gave hints to the influence of the debate to the late effects of NS trauma without specifying. So I examined this question on the basis of written sources the main method used here for the historical reconstruction was investigation of literature and documents. The analysis was based on the thorough research of the institutional and medical historical literature to the structural development of the discipline, psychiatry and the institution in the post-war era. There are many valuable contributions by Mareike Giswit-Hofstra, Edward Schorter, Franz Werner Kersting, Volker Röcke and Paul Weindling all between 2004 and 2010. The changing concepts and terms specifically are analyzed in detail by Christian Pross, Svenja Goltermann, Heinz-Peter Schmiedebach and Stefan Priebe. 
Additional sources were autobiographical literature by involved persons like Walter von Bayer, Heinz Helfner, Johannes Grimerius, and others. Important sources provided documents and other, other <coughs> sorry, <coughs> archival material like conferences, papers, <coughs> correspondences, and other articles of the involved persons. The documents are located in various estates and personal files of the participants in the university archives and in the German Federal Arch Archive Koblenz. The articles are found in leading German psychiatric journals in the inv investigation period, like the Nervenarzt, Ärztliche Wochenschrift and others. Prior to the actual results, I want to express my thanks to Alexander von Rumeau for his valuable hints to the presentation and I'm particularly grateful to Gerhard Bader, Thomas Becker, <coughs> and Heine Fangerau for having opened so many doors for me. Results. Let's talk about the results. Our results show that in contra contrast to the symptoms of war, victims and returnees in the first years after the war, the health consequences of the survivors of the concentration camps has hardly been an issue. First of all, Eugene Oh, Eugene Minkowski reported 1946 in a French journal about psychological problems of concentration camp survivors and presented his results in a meeting of the Swiss Society uh, of Psychiatry. The sources show that as one of the first in West Germany, Walter Schulte referred in the German Medical Weekly, the Deutsche Medizinische Wochenschrift, to trauma-induced effects. In reference to Karl Bonhoeffer's research about resilience of the human soul after the First World War, Schulte pointed to a, quote, limit of mental sustainability. 1948, Walter von Bayer adapted this position and indicated that, quote, the influence of the sociological backgrounds and mental reactions had been known for a long time. These contribution together with the results of the first international congresses to injuries of health and late effects were largely ignored in Germany. Literature shows that among the first contact points for survivors of NS terror were the counseling center in Munich, where Johannes Grimerius and Walter Seitz since 1950 provided mental advice and expert reports. Grimerius remembered, quote, it was known fairly rapidly, and many people seeking advice came to us. I had to demonstrate with the objective evidence the causal connection between imprisonment and now existing damages. For us, this correlation was undoubted. Shortly afterwards, expert reports had been created in the psychiatric clinics Heidelberg by Walter von Bayer, München by Kurt Kolle, Mainz by Erich Kluge and Göttingen by Ulrich Wenzlaff. The viewed publication indicate that the question of possible mental long-term effects of NS terror was positioned 1957 in the psychiatric journal The Neurologist, Der Nervenarzt. The prelude was a contribution of Walter von Bayer and the following article of Hans Strauss, at that time living and practicing in New York. Von Bayer stated, quote, experiences with extreme damages, which intervened deeply in the vital and moral existence of the victims and left behind partial real restructurings of the personality. The above mentioned experts have published first results. Kolle interpreted the pathological picture as, quote, reaction of estrangement. Wenzlaff was speaking about, quote, ultimate bearing capacity, when the old world had suffered a deep rift, when contents and values from life for years were forced to isolate without participating in the community, communication of the community. This position mostly met with resistance of West German psychiatrists and authorities. They rejected accordingly retirement in cases of no organic injury. It is liable that the inserting debate gained in importance with adoption of the German federal indemnica indemnification law <clears throat> under its decree in June 1956 
traumatic neurosis as a result of an accident of a war were deemed as not liable for any compensation in principle. 1960, the Federal Court of Justice passed in a leading decision that, quote, victims can claim indemnification also for mental disorders caused adequate by persecution measures. After this decision, further West German universities, hospitals, start with the appraisals of the concentration camp survivors, <coughs> like in Bonn with Jörg Weibrecht, Hamburg with Hansburger Prinz, and Cologne with Helmut Paul and Hans Joachim Herberg. In the publication, Persecution and Fear in the Effects on Body and Mind, Verfolgung und Angst in ihren leibseelischen Auswirkungen by Hans Mach, Psychiatrists in West Germany and USA reported about their experiences in the expert practice. The claim that far-reaching trauma experiences could cause continuing changes and mental sufferings was regarded as revolutionary. The documents show that one year later, in 1961, the acceptance of the mental consequences of Ennis persecution has been first publicly formulated and discussed on a regional convention of neurologists and psychiatrists in Baden-Baden. Walter von Bayer, Wolfgang Jakob, both Heidelberg, and Paul Matusek, Munich, justified mental damages with traumatic influences to the humans as, quote, historical sociological being. Sources gave the impression that studies of sociolo so sociologists affected the research interests and professional behavior of these psychiatrists. The presented contents were written, formulated in the anthology Mental Late Damages After Political Persecution by Helmut Paul and Hans Joachim Herberg. Wenzlaw Kluge von Bayer and his consultants Heinz Helfner and Karl Peter Kiska exposed their problems of psychiatric expert activity in particular and psychiatric diagnosis in general. Von Bayer et al. demanded reliable standards in the evaluation of continuing chronic persecution damages. These positions get consider cons considerable criticism and resistance by the authorities. Represent representing the responsible authority in North Rhine-Westphalia, Helmut Lotz invited to a conference which discredited the content of the book as well as the qualification of the authors. A main criticism was the re reproaching of mixing of, quote, knowledge and values. The critic Hermann Wittner reminded the psychiatry as medical discipline to remain quite modest. The result of the conference was a clear rejection of the book and the advice for boycotting of Paul and Herberg as experts. <coughs> also, there was <coughs> counter-criticism. This reaction accused the emigrated psychoanalyst Kurt Eisler as, quote, refusal of, no, sorry, refusal of empathy. He emphasized, the murder of how many children of men, a man had to be symptom free to have a normal constitution. I repeat that sentence. The murder of how many children a man had to be symptom free to have a normal constitution. The criticized authors insisted in, on the general validity of their scientific findings and claimed that their arguments in their forthcoming comprehensive investigation will be proved anyway. Von Bayer replied the critics an obvious, quote, insufficient methodical penetration and imperfect information about already published studies. Yeah. <clears throat> the analysis reveals that Walter von Bayer, Heinz Hefner, and Karl Peter Kiske presented 1964 in the year of Auschwitz trial in Frankfurt a solid database for their argumentation with the book Psychiatry of the Persecuted, Psychiatrie der Verfolgten. Based on about 700 case studies from eight years, expert practice, they proved undoubtedly that traumatization can affect pronounced and persistent severe symptoms. Their survey lands on an anthropological concept to psychiatric um, review, 
our analyses show that questions of human existence and a philosophical understanding of people influence their psychiatric research. The authors understood the impact of imprisonment as, quote, traumatic shock of existence due to rejection, degradation, and isolation, and thus the breakage of trust, the destruction of the supporting floor in humanity at all. This leads us to the dis discussion. What were the key steps of dealing with the late effects of Nazi terrorism and how they were essential impulses for the post-war psychiatry in West Germany and thus to the development to the psychiatric reform? There are many points of view to consider here. One essential fact was that German psychiatrists created appraisals <coughs> through the confrontation with the traumatized and the course study specialists began the debate and got a database. Fundamental platforms for discussion, uh, discussing these positions were publications and conferences within the community. Initially joined with international colleagues, psychiatri psychiatrists ex act as consultants initiated 1957 a debate in the journal Der Nervenarzt. Further publications, especially the postdoctoral thesis of Wenzlaff, were influential for the debate to resilience and late effects of NS trauma. As catalysts for this development are understandable the law change 1956 and the relevant leading decision 1960. After this, several hospitals' expert practices were established. A further impulse was the first public discussion to the question in, at the conference in Baden-Baden, 1961. The appraiser formulated there a new understanding. The genesis of mental illnesses was not only by the individual, but it was also a responsibility within the society. Simultaneously, it evoked massive criticism and a call for boycotts by the authorities and colleagues. In Paul and Herberg's anthology, published as a follow-up to the conference, several speakers presented their positions. The novelty of this book was that it discusses less the existence of long-term effects, but more demanded common reliable standards as evidence. In my point of view, the most influential step was the publication of Psychiatrie der Verfolgten in 1964. By this publication, the new understanding of genesis of mental illnesses guide, uh, gets scientific proof, uh, proof. This was an important move toward tra trauma treatment and the reform-orientated psychiatry. The authors proved for the first time that persecution and concentration camp imprisonment can cause lasting mental damages. To that time, always and exclusively indigenous causes were emphasized and almost always claims for compensation of victims were refused. Now, psychotraumatological damages could be no longer construed as simulation. Literary and original sources are pointing to the impact of picking up of anthropological and sociological approaches by the experts in their work. As an example should be seen the recognition of rejection, degradation and isolation as a causal factor of mental late effects. It can be asserted that the view of a purely biological genetic perception of mental disorders was supplemented by an awareness of the influence of material social living conditions. From my point of view, the knowledge transfer opened the scientific and public debate for alternative approaches in psychiatric care in general and in working with traumatized persons in particular. Let's conclude. The analysis, uh, analysis permits the conclusion that there were several influence factors in dealing with late effects of NS terror by West German psychiatric care. First, rendering of expert opinions created a database and attracted the attention of expert colleagues. Second, the presentation of the results in scientific community triggered a broad and conflictual discussion that went beyond the expert circle. Third, the transport, uh, transfer of knowledge from sociology and anthropology affected the psychiatric debate. Fourth and finally, the publication Psychiatrie der Verfolgten was a groundbreaking step. Its influence reached well beyond the professional sphere. 
It contained mental damages of concentration camp victims, scientifically improved compensation for the victims of national socialism, and established psychodynamic thinking in German psychiatry. In summary, these steps contributed a new understanding of genesis of the mental illnesses that are not only biological, but also are depending from the responsibility of, our, of the society. From my point of view, it was an essential component to the reform-orientated psychiatry in the late 1960s and 70s in West Germany. It opened the specialist discourse for altern alternative treatment approaches and opened medical experts an entire different view to people who had suffered immense grief. Thank you very much. Thank you.